Hello, I'm Marsha Ogden. Welcome to my podcast, Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. It's for anyone who's passed that milestone, like me, by a long chalk, and who, like me, has realised that we could be on this earth for another 30 or 40 years. So let's plan to make the rest of our life the best of our life. Before we get started with this week's episode, can I just remind you to please, please, please review, share and subscribe to the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you do want to plan to make the rest of your life the best of your life, take a look at www.gurgleit.com forward slash my best life and find out more about my best life journal and workshops. Welcome to episode 41 of the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast. This one's called A Different Approach to Weight Loss. And to find out what that different approach is, I'll be chatting to Yorkshire lass, Patsy Hansen. I'm from Lancashire, other side of the Pennines. It could be war. Have you had a good week? Nothing's gone wrong particularly for me. A few hiccups, but I've felt a bit subdued for the last few days. It's been a waxing moon too. And I thought that's when you're supposed to be full of the joy of new beginnings. So I wasn't very happy. But no, I googled it. And guess what? At this stage of the moon's cycle, it said, be prepared to make decisions on the spot and not lose your cool when things come at you from nowhere. And that, girls and boys, does sum up my last few days. Ugh. Anyway, before I introduce you to Patsy, here's this week's handy life hack. It's to do with batteries. Bounce batteries to see if they're good or bad. Drop them on the table from about six inches high. If they give one small bounce and fall right over, they're okay and good to use. If they bounce around any more than that, they're dead, or they're on the way out. I met my guest Patsy Hansen at the Her Story Global Women's Empowerment Conference in London recently, where we were fellow speakers. Although Patsy's story and expertise is in the field of nutrition, I was really drawn to what she teaches for two reasons. One, Like me, the methods she teaches are born from experience, not from what she read in a book. And two, like me, the methods she teaches rely on the knowledge that your mindset controls everything you do, everything you achieve and everything you don't achieve. Do listen right through. Patsy makes some very personal admissions about her former self and what she's learned from her experiences. But first... A note about the forthcoming Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus Public Workshop. We've all got a situation that we're not happy with in life. It doesn't have to be a big, bad habit. It might be an unresolved altercation with a neighbour that just puts pressure on you every time you walk out of the front door. It might be that you don't see your grandchildren enough. It might be an addiction. It might be gambling. I've never found a diet that works for me. We've all got something that we would like to be different, but we've settled for it. We believe we can't change. The Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus Workshops and Journal gives you a plan that can be applied to any area of your life. If you can get to Wigan on Monday the 30th of March, come to my public workshop If you'd prefer a cosier group, invite some friends round and I'll run a workshop at yours. All participants in the workshop take away a personal copy of the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus My Best Life Journal, which retails at £33. So a two-hour workshop, including the journal, is just £47. That's coaching plus a year's worth of motivation 
for just 90p a week. Go to www.gurgleit.com forward slash my best life and click the appropriate buttons. Here's Patsy Hansen. This week, my guest on the Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is Patsy Hansen, the weight loss coach. Now, you might have heard of weight loss coaches before, but Patsy's approach is quite different and it is in line with what we say on Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus. And that is that we are not too old to change. It's not too late to change. So hello, Patsy, and welcome. Hello, Marsha. It's great to be here. And can you tell us how you got to this story? How did you become the weight loss coach and what made you become the weight loss coach? Oh, well, my story, Marsha, it's a bit of a one, really. And I think it will resonate with quite a number of women out there as well, really. I started dieting at the grand old age of 11. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, I grew up as the chubby baby and, you know, the toddler that I think I was about 18 months before I walked because I was just so big. Um, you know, I was the the teenager with puppy fat, you know, and the adolescent that was just extremely unhappy because she didn't look like her, her friends, really. And I got to about 11 when I realized that I was a bit different to my friends. I didn't quite look as well as they did in, in my skinny jeans, the drain pipe jeans back in those days. Um, and I started my first diet and I remember I lost seven pounds and I was delighted that I'd lost seven pounds but I was absolutely I mean I was so fed up with what I was eating I couldn't wait to get off it um, and I should have known at that point this was not something I could do, do week in week out and it wasn't sustainable for me but as an 11 year old you're not thinking like that so basically that started my relationship with yo-yo dieting and that went on for the next 25 years. And it's just incredible when you think about how much time you waste and how, how much precious time you give away to eating in a manner that doesn't serve you, eating foods that you don't even like. And invariably, you end up putting on even more weight. So you will lose something, but you'll end up putting that back on again plus some. Um, and it's that horrible, vicious circle. And, you know, eventually I became very, very unhappy about it. I was, you know, I was living in London on my own at that point. And I was, I was low. I really was. And um, I remember securing a job to come back up north. And uh, so between the two jobs, I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll go on holiday. And I went to the Caribbean. I went to Jamaica. That's where my parents are actually from. So um, I've got and a lot of friends on. country in the whole world, <laughs> in the world of the ones I've been to so far. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and I used to stay on Negro Beach because that's where my, oh, my dad was yeah. actually raised. I had a lot of friends down there. And um, I, had, I had a lot of food triggers. So in other words, I would eat just because of where I was or who I was with or what time it was. It wasn't anything to do with being hungry. I just had food triggers. And one of my food triggers was on Negril Beach, they had a jerk hut. And every time I went, I would always get jerk chicken from there with some chips. And that was my thing. That's just what I did. So this one time I turned up in Negril, I thought, fantastic, got my usual, took it back to my apartment, ate it. And I could tell that the meat was not cooked properly. But it was a food trigger. And I know it sounds ridiculous now, but I think we've all done it. Um, because I was triggered, I just kept going. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where I realized, now that really isn't cooked. And I left that, but the damage was already done. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with food poisoning, basically. Um, and a friend of mine came to see me who was a very, um, he lived a very simple life by the beach. And he came to see me, he said, what's going on? What happened? And I said, well, I just had this chicken and I passed out and blah, blah, blah. And he was going, why were you eating that? I said, well, why not? It's jerk chicken. What's wrong with jerk chicken? He said, you are feeding your body food but it does not want and probably doesn't even need why are you doing it and I didn't know what he meant and he said look I'm cooking at a beach party tomorrow come up and see what I mean and they basically caught fish directly from the sea and they were cooking it on an open fire and they made some vegetables with it I think it might have been ladies fingers and pumpkin and pak choy I think mixed with it. and it was amazing Marsha the food it was like this fried fish from the sea directly from the sea with these mixed vegetables with minimal seasoning and it was just 
tasted amazing and it's not that i've never had fish and veg before but it just there was something about the simplicity of it yeah. and it, it tasted like little mouthfuls of nourishment every forkful and i thought to myself do you know what i think he's got something here but you know i came back to england and you know uh, life takes over and we're we're constantly presented with healthy foods that are packaged in trays that you have to pierce and throw into a microwave yeah, yeah, <laughs> convinced yeah. that it's yeah. good for us and that it's yeah. nourishing us because the label tells us that that's what exactly yeah. what it's doing i've had this other experience that says well no that's nourishment that's natural that's back to basics mm -hmm. and it did take another four or five years of having that first experience and then doing lots of my own research mm -hmm. into no longer diets but sort of ways of eating and like a and way of life rather than I a lifestyle diet. This is absolutely yeah. and when i found the right formula for me and it wasn't just about what i was eating it was also about what i was thinking and what i was doing when i found that click into place i it, i mean i was just on a roller coaster i mean i lost three stones in eight months and some people might think oh, that's a bit slow weight loss that's not very good my point is two things I lost three stones in eight months. I couldn't do that in 25 years. No, I, I dieted, yo -yo dieted yeah. for 25 years before I found this formula. Mm -hmm. And I was then able to lose it in eight months. Mm -hmm. but the best bit for me is, and the thing that I think makes what I do very different to what else is out there, is that I've kept it off for the last 13 years. Mm -hmm. There's no more yo-yo dieting for me. There's no more putting it back on plus some. It is over, Marsha. Yeah. Because I know exactly how to eat, what to eat, mm -hmm. and when to eat. Yeah. And I've cracked the formula for me. And don't get me wrong, and for your listeners out there, I really need them to know this. We are all unique individuals. We're unique beings. And so what works for me might not work for you. Mm -hmm. You have to invest your time and energy into your health and finding the formula that works mm -hmm. for you. So you can, I can give you the tools, mm -hmm. and I can set the context but you've got to find your magic formula of yeah. what foods help you lose weight, what foods help you maintain weight, what foods help you um, uh, gain weight, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I found my formula. It clicked into place. I lost this incredible... And it, for me, it was life-changing, Marsha, yeah. because yeah. I was miserable when I was overweight. Yeah. So losing three stones was life-changing. But I also am very clear. If I take my eye off the ball, I know that I will end up exactly where I'm coming from. I'll end up right back there. I will always have to be vigilant around my weight. And I think yeah. too many people that diet think that it is for a moment in time. Yeah. I could do yeah. this and I could do it for a few weeks and I'll get to that milestone event. Yeah. And, and then, then I'll go, go back to where I'll... You've got yeah. to keep on top of it. Yeah. You, and for me, I know I have propensities to put on weight. I think that I'm big boned and all that kind of stuff. I will go back to where I came from if I do not keep my hand on the ball. So to me, I've carved out a new eating lifestyle for myself and I have to take one day at mm -hmm. a time. Yeah. That's all I can do. Yeah. One day at a time, moving in the right direction for me. Yeah, I think taking one day at a time is significant. And yes. this is what I always say about journaling. That's what keeps me mm -hmm. on the straight and narrow, so especially with eating. Mm -hmm. Because... And my, my friends, or some friends, laugh at me because I weigh myself every single day because I lost weight. I got to my ideal weight. And like you say, it's so easy to let it just come back because you fall yeah. back into, well, I've, I've hit that now. I can, I, I'll monitor it. And then you mm. weigh yourself once a week and you think, I've put four pounds on. Ah, oh, mm. stuff it. It obviously doesn't work. I'm not doing yeah. it anymore. But if you Absolutely. weigh yourself every single day, if hmm. it's half a pound or a pound more, you think, oh, oh that's yeah. not what I wanted to see. I'll sort <laughs> that out today. Today. In, today, I will get it back to where it was yesterday. Marsha, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. But you can read some things that say, nope, only weigh yourself once a week. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I never get that. Now, no. I think the difference, Marsha, might be if you're in weight loss mode, you're trying to lose weight, maybe you should only weigh yourself once a week because you can become discouraged if you're on your journey and you know, you're putting a lot of effort in and you've only lost a pound. Yeah. When typically, that's probably what all you are going to lose in that week. So you've only lost a pound. You think, oh, this thing doesn't work. I'm not doing this anymore. All that effort. Yeah. You know, I went out with friends and I, I stayed away from what they were eating. And look, I'm not even looking. 
I can understand it. But when you're in maintenance, like you are, like I am, when you're trying to maintain your weight because you yeah, are where you want to be, thing, I suppose, you've got to yeah. keep an eye on yeah. it on a yeah. daily basis. I'm terrible. Yeah. I jump yeah. on the scales in the morning and in the evening. I do. Oh, I love it in the I'll just do it I'm in the obsessed. morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I put it down in my journal every day yes. and make sure that it, Absolutely. It, it, it doesn't move from there. Absolutely. That's your responsibility. Mm. That's your health. That's your body. You know, so why not? Yeah. Monitor yeah. it. Keep yeah. on top of it. Don't let anybody else tell you what's the right way mm. to maintain your weight or oh, it's not a good thing to weigh yourself too often. Well, that might be for you, but this works for me. Yeah. You yeah. are a unique individual yeah. being. That's and right. And being individual, yes. I think it, it's got to be a mindset thing because, I mean, I've done it with drinking, with alcohol. If I went around saying, oh, are you having a glass of wine? I can't have one. I've given up alcohol. <laughs> it suggests that I'm going through a hardship. Yes. Whereas when it's, no, I have this because, to be honest, I hate the taste of alcohol yes. and I decided to stop drinking it. It's no hardship to me at all one bit and I don't get tempted. And I think it's possibly the same thinking needs to, you need to yeah. find something that makes you able to think like that about food. You know, what you tell people around you in terms of well actually I don't even like the taste of it anymore mm. so that's mm. the reason why I don't do it anymore and just being quite firm with it so that people because sometimes the, those closest to you can be the worst mm. in trying to entice you to be the person that they need you to be and the person yes. they both want you to be yeah. that they've yeah. got in a lot, little box and they understand what that person is and their likes and dislikes and how to operate with them if you Absolutely. change a part of you, it forces a part of them to change. They don't like that. So it's like they want you to be the same yeah. person. So if you can be quiet, you've got your little script ready, and it's like, well, actually, I don't like the taste anymore, da, 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 and be quite firm about it, hopefully you can hold your own. One of the things I've noticed, um, particularly around weight loss and mindset, is you can tell yourself something very similar, such as, well, um, I don't even like chocolate. Mm. But it doesn't have to be true, Marsha. It actually doesn't have to be true. You can suggest things to your brain and it does not have to be true. It will absorb it and it will take it on board. If you tell it enough times and you act it through and you feel the emotion of it, you can actually put yourself off foods. You can actually convince yourself of things. And you know, it's a bit like the whole placebo thing. Mm. You know, people that have got a real condition and they've received a placebo, not the real deal. And they've actually willed themselves into receiving the solution and being, and, and you know, so, and it can happen. Yes, it's it, it will work. Yeah, it's in my because head. Because they I know want it, work. it to work. Yeah. 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 They want it to work That's so it, badly. Yeah. They're convinced they're the ones that receive the real treatment, not the placebo, because they, they're, they're making themselves feel all the different experiences mm. and the stages that the doctor has told them they're going to go through. So in mm. week one, you might feel a bit nauseous, and in week two, you'll feel a bit like this, and week three, you might be a bit tired, but in week four, you'll feel yeah. fantastic. Yeah. They make themselves feel all those emotions. Exactly. But they're on the placebo. <laughs> so they make it. So uh, what I'm saying, it, I'm trying to say, is that you can use your mind to assist you in your direction of travel. So whether that is to become teetotal, whether that is to lose weight and become healthier, you can tell your mind, I love all green foods. Mm. I just think green, oh, special, yeah. oh, yeah. give me that kale. Like, <laughs> you can somehow get yourself, but it's understanding how to use the mind as your greatest mm -hmm. weapon mm. on your, you know, on your side, basically. And, yeah. it, and it is really, really possible. Yeah. Nothing needs to be true. Your mind doesn't know whether it's true or not you can be very, very suggestible and persuasive yeah. and uh, yeah, use yeah. it as a great tool. Yeah. And I, I think, I think I saw on your website that, that breaking bad habits is a huge mm. factor in weight loss as well. Like it yeah. is with, with drinking, etc. because mm. with, with eating often you'll think what a tiny portion, that's not going to feed a mouse. <laughs> but if you take your time yeah. and you chew it properly and you digest it properly, you're full. Yeah. After sort of half the size of half the portion that you would yeah. have normally. But it's just your expectation. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and it's something I've said for, for years now. I think in a way, maybe as a, um, a nation, really, I don't know if this is just a British thing. 
But the way that we say, if somebody asked us for our comments on a cafe or an eatery, mm. we will say, oh, it's really good. You get good, decent get portion sizes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's always about the portions. Yeah, okay, you've got good yeah. portions. That, it's a big th- thing to us. Yeah. It's a big deal that yeah. we have to have plenty on our, fit, our, our plate. It's not just about the taste sensation anymore. It's yeah. not that it's enough and it tastes amazing. Mm. We somehow yeah. don't think that that is worth it it's not the same value for money as piled high but it might yes. be a mediocre taste and we've just become that way you That's know I remember right. when I was growing up and a lot of your listeners will be the same I remember Walker's crisps in the corner shops and they used to have the small packet the individual package that they've got now and then they had a medium-sized packet which they called the family pack. yes <laughs> and like do you know we're eating those on our own now? Never exactly. mind family pack. Yeah. We're eating well, those I saw on something. our own. Watching a drama on the television on a Friday night. Exactly. Yeah. The whole yeah. thing. Where's yeah. this family pack thing gone? Yeah. Well, I saw oh, a comparison a while ago in the paper, and it was lots of different things, but in particular things like donuts and scones. Mm. You think back to when we were little, mm. they were half the size. I know. They are now. I know. We want everything big and yeah. like you say, it's got to stuff your face. Otherwise, yeah. it you've not got value for like, money. It doesn't feel like value for money. But the bottom mm-hmm. line is, it's like, oh, it's this is your body you're talking about. <laughs> value for money doesn't come into this. This is about your body. You're talking yeah. about your yeah. health. You're talking yeah. about. So somehow it becomes better value for money if you can eat it all and it's damaging and it's more than your body needs and yeah. your body is struggling to digest it. It doesn't even want it. But it's good value, don't worry, it's good value because I've yeah, got loads yeah. of it. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the, we must separate this value for money thing mm-hmm. from our health and what goes into our bodies. Yeah. So when you coach people, do you educate them about the nutrition as well as, as so, so that they can see for themselves and try what's best for them? Or yeah. do you have a strict sort of, this is my plan and this is what I recommend? Is it, I, it's very individual. It's very individual, Marsha. It has to be because we're all individuals and um, and we have to honour that and respect mm. that. So essentially, I move clients in the direction of clean eating. I actually think that food in its simplest form and most basic form is the way that we should be moving. Um, and so I will have lists of the clean foods and the ones that aren't. And I'm going to, I encourage clients to eat more from the permissible foods list, I'll call it and less from the ones that, you know, the foods they shouldn't be eating, such as processed foods, basically. I coach my, my, my women to move in the direction of clean eating, basically. Um, and there are some set recipes that they can follow, but I want them to take control of it. So if they know they've got a condition where they shouldn't be eating tomatoes, they need to take control of that and take responsibility of that. So, well, I can see that there's a recipe here, but it's got tomatoes in. I'll try it without the tomatoes or I'll just skip that recipe and try something else and take that responsibility, but play with the different foods that we can have rather than looking at foods and go, mm, I can't have that. Look at what you can have because there's some pretty awesome vegetables out there, yeah. fruits yeah. out there and things you can do with them alternatives to all sorts i mean i've not tried it but i've heard you can do a cauliflower based um pizza i do that i do that regularly do you does it taste nice i've never tried it it doesn't taste like cauliflower right and my husband who is your typically british man egg chips burger type person (laughs) yes he he loves cauliflower pizza or sometimes i'll roll them thinner and do them as a cauliflower pancake wow and they are absolutely lovely. Now, you, wow. you bind it together with egg. And because I'm That's vegan, right. I'm not using egg anymore. So mm. I, I've been doing it with coconut milk. Oh, and that'd be nice. They are absolutely lovely. And like I say, he, he likes cauliflower, but he, he thinks also it doesn't taste like cauliflower. If you didn't know, you'd know it wasn't dough. You'd yeah. know it wasn't a, a, your normal pizza base. But you wouldn't say it's cauliflower. So what does it taste like then? It's kind of vegetable but you know cauliflower's got a very distinctive taste. Mm. It doesn't have that. Well, that's it's, good, because I'm not a massive cauliflower fan because no. of that little taste you're talking no. about. So if you can't taste it, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and good. mushroom mints. Oh, yes. You just put them in your food processor and, and 
zush them up into and then so you can that it looks like mincemeat. Yes. They don't know the difference. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Just, did you enjoy that? <laughs> yes, it was very nice. Like, <laughs> Just don't tell them. But, but you're absolutely right, Marsh. There are a, a number of alternatives out there. People just need to start experimenting yeah. with the food rather than thinking, oh, salads are boring or, oh, vegetables are boring. Mm. Experiment. And, yes. you know, I will give them ideas on how they can do things slightly differently with vegetables to judge them up a little bit. And, mm. you know, sometimes even from childhood, we'll say stuff like, oh, I don't like lettuce. You know, it's like, well, yeah, maybe you didn't when you were given it when you were yeah. 12. Yeah. I've tried yeah. it since now, but I know I wouldn't no, like it. I, no. I pick it out of every sandwich I get. I don't want it. I don't yeah, like it. That's it. And also, I don't like it. Have you ever tried it? No, I just no. don't like it. <laughs> totally. How do you know you don't like it? <laughs> but this, this whole approach, because you're trying to create a new eating lifestyle, means that you've got to open your mind to trying new things and not shutting things down and saying, well, I didn't like it when I was 12, so I'm not prepared to try it again. Because you're going to limit... The, what you can eat and it's not necessary you need to really open up um those channels really and just say look i'm going to try that and yeah. why, why not try this and well if you tell me how to cook it i can give it a go mm -hmm. you know? so um so yeah it's, it's a bit coaching around that but the a lot of coaching around mindset as well mm -hmm. anybody can eat anybody can eat marsha i can give you a four-week plan Lisa, and just follow that and you can be really good and just do that but how are you going to sustain into the future? Mm. You know, when you start to get bored of what you're eating, oh, this is oh, this isn't moving quickly enough for me. Yeah. Your mindset has to be right that just keeps you on path. Because actually what I'm trying to create here is a lifestyle. This is no longer a diet. We're not doing that anymore. We're not looking at milestones and looking good for certain dates. This is about yeah. my life. This is yeah. about me living my healthiest life. Mm -hmm. so it's about my health first. My weight loss will be um, a happy byproduct, yeah. and I will feel good. I will have lots of energy. This is my life now. Exactly. So every day, this is how I eat. Yeah, and because I people think it. it's people will always say, "Oh, I haven't got the willpower to do that." Mm -hmm. I haven't got any willpower. <laughs> Me neither. But it's like you say, if you make it into a lifestyle. Mm -hmm then you don't need willpower that doesn't come That's into right. it and it's something you want to do it's mm. not being imposed upon you it's not being expected of you you want to do this you know so it's finding your why so yes. that's the thing that is your touchstone every time you feel a weak moment remember why you're doing it why you declare mm. that this is what you wanted for you i always ask well i always try to remember to ask my guests <laughs> if you met the teenage Patsy now, what's one thing that she would say, I'm really proud of you for that? And mm. what's one thing that she would say, oh, I, did, I would rather we did have done that in a different way mm. or approached it in a different way? Mm. Um, I think I think she'd be proud of me because because where I was, I wasn't a very confident person because I was overweight, I was very insecure. Um, and to see how I am now, so confident and sharing with other women my story and trying to support them and inspire them and motivate them, I think she'd be really proud of me, the, the journey I've taken, how far I've come really from that, yeah. that person that didn't have that confidence to somebody that can stand up in front of people now and talk about my experiences and encourage people to... Um, to do the same if they wish to do so. So I think she'd be proud of me for that. In terms of what she might have hoped we'd done differently, I think there's probably not a doubt in my mind that she would say that she wished that we had embarked on this journey sooner, mm. that I decided to put my health and well-being and happiness first a lot quicker, really, um, a lot sooner. Nowadays, we talk a lot about mental health. When I was growing up, we didn't. Mm. And it's great that it's yes. less of a taboo subject now. But I still wouldn't put what I was going through in that category. In fact, I was a different person then, Marsha. I was so, being overweight, I was overweight, I was acne ridden. I was, it made me really unhappy and made me feel unworthy. But it made me mean. Mm. And I don't, I was just, um, I was mean, I think. I was, because I was so hurt, mm. always hurt. I was always I just wasn't a nice person to yeah. be around. I can look back now and see that 
but I also now now know how much that eats away at you as a person because it takes so much more energy to be negative than it just yes. be positive. Yeah. And so I must have just been going through so much turmoil and wasted energy of negativity and just being mean and hurtful and, you know, just I can't find the right word for it. But yeah, just basically I wasn't a very nice person to be around. Yeah. Um, but did you say uh, that, don't they, that if somebody is mean or bitter or nasty, it's because they have unresolved issues stuff going within on them. in their head. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and in order to lose the weight, it took me almost to become a different person. Mm. I needed a different mindset. And before I knew it, because remember, I've been on this journey for 13 years. Mm. So eventually, I could see me changing as well because my mindset was changing. I couldn't continue to think the same way in order to get these results. If I thought the same way I did, previously when I was yo-yo dieting then I would have got the same results that I got when I was yo-yo dieting I literally had to change my mindset in order Absolutely. to get a different outcome this time yeah. but actually it did change me as well my personality my character has changed as a result of the journey that I've been on and that's why I'm saying mindset is so powerful so powerful yeah. Yeah. and I think she'd say I wish we hadn't done that for that yeah. long yeah. because the person you are today so happy, so confident, mm. so content and relaxed. Yes. It's so much better and so much more effortless mm -hmm. than that other version of things. That's right. We are running along the same track, really, aren't we? Yeah. Um, and with the sort of mindset, with journaling, yes. with knowing that it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter how long you've had a bad habit, mm. it doesn't matter what it is, mm. it can be resolved and you can be happier. Oh, well, thank you so much for being our guest this week. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been lovely having you here and have a great day. Yes, you too, Marsha, and all your listeners. Thank you. Wasn't that great? You can do it. We've all got a mind. Just make sure that you feed it what you want it to believe. It's all down to your mindset. All the links to Patsy are to be found in the show notes as usual. Before we end this week, here's the answer to last week's quiz question, along with this week's. The answer to last week's quiz is let it be. If you're thinking it should be Abbey Road, then that was the last recorded album. Let it be is the last released. If you want to check up what the question actually was, you'll have to listen back to episode 40. Here's this week's quiz question. 1974 saw the first sale of what kitchen appliance to UK homes? No Googling. Answer next week. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll see you next time. The directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus podcast is created and produced by me, Marsha Ogden, and it's available on several platforms, as well as via our website. So please keep listening and tell your friends all about it. Do follow us on Instagram and Facebook too. You'll find all the relevant links in the show notes. Directory of a Dream Life 50 Plus is about making our life happier and easier. So if you do have suggestions or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, just drop me a line at marsha at gurgleit.com. Have a fantastically happy week and I'll see you next time.